So in this video we are going to have a look at system architecture. And by system architecture I mean the von Neumann architecture which is the CPU architecture that you need to know about for GCSE computer science. Sometimes known as the Princeton architecture although in the exam they will just refer to it as the von Neumann architecture. Um, so the way that we're going to have a look at this we are going to have a look at all of the internal registers of the CPU what they do what they are used for we're going to look at how the CPU communicates with the memory store uh, in order to access programs and data uh, we're going to have a look at the fetch decode execute cycle go through that whole process so that you've got a good understanding of what's actually happening inside the CPU so here I am at the top uh, and uh, down the bottom on the left hand side uh, you can see my um, text window if I need to write any messages in there I will write those messages in there okay so um, on the right hand side uh, the main window I have a uh, an abstraction of what the internal workings of the von Neumann architecture might look like. Uh, now I have to stress this is only a model. Uh, this is not. This bears no resemblance to what the actual internals uh, of a computer look like. Um, the CPU is just billions of transistors uh, lined up uh, in specific ways. The internal workings do not actually look like this. This is a visual representation to help you understand uh, the internal workings of the CPU. Uh, I've drawn these little lines uh, from each of the registers, linking them to the uh, to the control unit. However, uh, in an actual CPU, that's not necessarily going to uh, you know it, it it doesn't look like this. Basically, I've I've arranged it in such a way uh, that it's easy for you to follow what is going on. But uh, but don't think that this is actually what it looks like. Okay, so let's just go over what this diagram represents. We have on the left hand side the CPU. This box here is the CPU. On the right hand side we have the memory store, the RAM. Now in an actual computer system each memory address as shown by these numbers down here uh, would be a binary number. Uh, I've written them in Denary so that it's easier for you to follow. Okay, Real memory addresses would be in binary. Um, we would probably access them using hexadecimal, uh, but for the purposes of this example, let's just keep it simple so that you can learn the bits that are relevant. Okay. <clears throat> So I will come back to the memory store. I'll explain what the memory store uh, is doing in a little while. Let's just have a look at the CPU. Okay, there's a number of different parts to the CPU. There is the CU here. Okay, CU. CU stands for control unit. Control unit is the the boss of the CPU, if you like. It's the uh, part of the CPU that controls everything that's going on. Okay, it makes sure that the registers can communicate with each other. It makes sure that um, commands are decoded and executed properly. Uh, it's sort of in charge of everything that goes on. Over here, this, this unit here, the ALU is the arithmetic logic unit. This is the bit that does the maths. Uh, and it also does any logical conditions uh, like um, uh, program branching for instance. So, so when you've got an if statement in your command uh, the way that it's written in assembly language is slightly different. Uh, it uses the uh, branches as, as the form uh, of, of moving around your program. You don't need to understand how that works at GCSE but anything like that, checking to, think, to, to see if things are less than or greater than different values, this is performed by the ALU. Any maths, adding, subtracting, uh, multiplication and division which is just repeated addition or repeated subtraction all of that stuff goes on in the ALU that is what it is responsible for okay so CU control unit ALU arithmetic logic unit uh, and if you're not sure in fact I should probably write this stuff down shouldn't I really uh, so CU is the uh, I can't type there we go Con not zontrol control unit uh, and the ALU is the, uh, this is not going to fit on one, one line, arithmetic uh, logic unit, unt, there we go, the arithmetic logic unit. 
Okay, so those are the two sections of that CPU. Now there's a number of different registers here. Remember a register is a tiny little storage space on the CPU which holds um, temporary data. Now in my uh, von Neumann architecture example here each of these registers um, is, is maybe 8 bits okay um, in a uh, in a modern CPU you might have 64-bit registers and there will be way more of them than this okay um, but the point is a register it's not like your main memory store it holds a tiny tiny bit of information which is relevant to that one particular phase of execution of the CPU okay so a register is a very small um, memory area on the CPU which holds uh, temporary data for a fraction of a second and there's a number of different registers that you need to be aware of PC stands for, I'll move my coffee out of the way so I don't spill it PC stands for program counter so we've got PC here uh, is the program counter okay and what the program counter does is it keeps track of our current position uh, in the program okay and it refers to a memory address so we can tell where we are in the program by saying right let's point to this memory address that's the instruction that we're currently executing okay so you can say that the program counter holds the location of the next command to be executed um, moving along we have this one here the MAR which is the memory address register okay the MAR is the memory address register memory anytime you've got an R in your um, uh, in your register abbreviations you can be reasonably sure that it's going to stand for register okay and uh, an M is going to stand for memory so if you having trouble remembering these different acronyms uh, then you know those are words that keep on cropping up and uh, remember if you get asked in, in the exam and you get stumped just have a guess okay if it asks you uh, to note down the um, names of the registers and you can't remember the full name, put the abbreviation. They often accept the abbreviation. Okay. Now the memory address register, the purpose of that, it holds an address to look at in memory. Okay. Now each of these numbers, if we just briefly move across the memory store here, each of these numbers is an address. This first one here is address 0. Okay, the data which is stored at address 0 is this here, LDA hash 007. The data which is stored at address 007 is 234. Hopefully that makes sense. Now whenever we're accessing the memory store, we have to have an address. All the address register stores is the location in memory. It doesn't contain any data. It doesn't receive any data. Okay, so if we're accessing the uh, the memory store, we need to know where we're looking, and the memory address register will store that information. Moving down here to this register, we have the MDR. So. We've got an M, so we know that that stands for memory. We've got a D, what could that stand for? It's a word I've already mentioned, and R is going to stand for register. Uh, so as I'm typing this, you've probably got an idea of what it stands for. Memory data register. Okay, now the memory data register, similar to the memory address register, it's obviously related to something uh, going to or from memory. All the memory data register stores is either the data that we have pulled out of the memory store or data that we are about to put back into the memory store okay now you'll notice these uh, cyan lines here these are what's known as buses a bus is a route from the CPU to the memory store okay now the address bus which is this top one here the address bus is one way Okay, we go from the MAR into the memory store. We do not ever pull anything out of the memory store into the address register. Um, the data bus down here uh, is two-way. It means that um, data can travel from the memory data register to the memory store or it can travel from the memory store to the memory data register. Okay, so um, we have the MDR which can store um, 
d uh, data pulled from memory and it can store memory which is a uh, sorry data which is about to go into memory okay so moving up to this one here the CIR no prizes for guessing what that R stands for okay CIR stands for current instruction register current uh, instruction 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 register okay uh, now the current instruction register as the name suggests will hold the instruction which is currently being executed and you might think well I why do we need a separate register for that? Everything will make sense when I go through the fetch, decode, execute cycle. So if you're not sure what I mean by the current instruction that's being stored, um, then don't worry, we will go over that in a um, sec. Now, the final register is called the accumulator. That is sometimes abbreviated to ACC. Okay? the accumulator later. Now the, what the accumulator does is it stores uh, data which is being used for maths things. When you're adding numbers you will add numbers onto whatever value is already stored in the accumulator. Okay, You don't take two values and then add them together. You say here's a value, add it to what's in the accumulator. Here's another value, add it to what's in the accumulator. Okay. Um, so that is all the registers. Program counter, which holds our current position in the program or the uh, the address of the uh, next instruction to be executed. The memory address register, which stores uh, the address that we are about to look up in memory. Now that could be an address that we're using to pull data out of uh, memory or it can be an address that we're using to push data into memory. Then we've got the MDR the memory data register which stores data which is about to go into the memory or data which has just been pulled out of the memory and then we have the CIR the current instruction register which stores our currently executing uh, instruction uh, and then we have the accumulator which stores the values that are that are being mathsed if that's a if that's a verb I don't know this cough is not bad anyway to start off with, when we first begin, when we first turn on the computer, all of the registers are blank except for the PC which is set to zero. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to go through the whole of the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Okay. And we're going to do it on this program which is currently in my memory store. Okay. Now for the GCSE you do not need to understand what these individual commands actually mean. For A level you do, um, but for the purposes of this I am just going to use them uh, as, a, uh, as an example so that we get into the flow of the fetch decode execute cycle so you can understand what's actually going on inside the PC. <coughs> okay, so uh, first of all, I said PC, I mean CPU obviously. Um, okay, so the first thing that happens during the fetch, the contents of the PC get copied across to the MAR. Okay, so we've got a zero in the PC that gets copied across to the MAR. Okay, so we are looking at memory address zero. Okay, this address gets uh, moved across the address bus into the memory store we locate this memory address in the memory store and we fetch the data which is stored in there so memory address 0 is here the data that is stored is LDA 007 um, sorry LDA hash 007 there is a that hash is not a typo there is a reason for that okay so that data gets transferred over the data bus into the MDR. Okay, so we've got the PC copied across to the MAR, we've looked up that memory address and then that data has been pulled across and stored in the MAR. Now the next thing that happens, the value that is currently stored in the MDR is copied into the CIR because that will be our uh, instruction that we're going to execute. Now there is a reason why we need it in this separate register instead of keeping it just in the uh, in the MDR that will become apparent later on. Okay. Now the final part of the fetch process uh, is 
often forgotten by many people but you've got to remember to increment the PC so the value in the PC goes up by one okay now that is the end of our first fetch okay so we've gone through a whole of the fetch we haven't decoded we haven't executed yet but the fetch in many ways is the most complex step okay so if you didn't get it go back and watch again but we are going to be going through this fetch process numerous times while we run this program okay now one thing uh, that we need to note here um, I have chosen a ridiculously simple program uh, to go through and if you do not understand exactly what's going on with this stuff you don't have to worry the things that you need to remember are what happens during the fetch what happens after the fetch during the decode and what happens after uh, the decode during the execute the ins and outs of how the actual things get executed is you know not not necessarily relevant okay now I'm just going to switch to a, a different slide now uh, with a little bit of information in it because once we, after we've done the fetch we have to then decode the instruction that we've got in our uh, current instruction register okay so when we decode something the CU will split the um, I put CPU there let's just change that the CU uh, will split the uh, instruction into two parts the opcode and the operand okay the opcode is like the thing that tells us what we're actually going to do and the operand is the data or information that we are going to perform that action on okay so in this example uh, just going back here we can see that my uh, instruction was LDA hash 007 so when we decode it we end up with an opcode of LDA and an operand of hash 007 okay now LDA stands for load data into the accumulator and which data are we going to load in well the operand tells us that um, now the hash symbol tells us to use um, immediate addressing which is a fancy way of saying yo this number that you've got here that's the actual number I want you to store if that hash symbol is not there then it's not this number that we're storing it's whatever data is stored at that memory address that will become apparent when I go through the uh, fetch for a second time so that hash basically means store this exact number as it is here okay but like I said unless you're doing a level you don't need to understand the ins and outs of uh, immediate addressing Okay, so we have now split this up into uh, an opcode and an operand. The opcode is LDA and the uh, operand is 007. So we're now going to actually execute that command. Okay, LDA stands for load data into the accumulator, and that hash symbol means store this exact value as it appears there. So the value in the accumulator becomes 007. Okay, and that is the end of our first cycle. Okay. Now, when you consider um, that cycle has taken a few minutes for us to go through, um, as a general rule, uh, well, as far as you guys are concerned, each of those cycles will last uh, as long as it takes the CPU to do one clock tick. Um, now, when you consider that uh, modern CPUs are operating at three or four gigahertz, that means it's doing four three or four billion of those every single second that's a that's that's fast right that's faster than we're doing it okay but don't worry okay uh, hopefully this will start to sink in as we uh, as we go through it now I'm just gonna put a couple of um, points on here um, I'm gonna put uh, opcode and uh, operand down here so when we decode operant operand uh, so when we decode we can uh, actually um, like you know keep track of, of, of what's going on okay so let's do our second fetch okay we go through the whole process again we copy the value of um, whatever's in the PC into the MAR boom okay so now the MAR holds this address one so we are going to go across the address bus to the memory store and we are going to look at address 
zero zero one there it is okay now the data stored in there is LDA zero zero one so that's what gets copied across the data bus into the MDR LDA zero uh, sorry zero one one L D uh, LSA uh, LDA I cannot type LDA it's Sunday all right um, 011 okay that's got copied across to the MDR the next step is we copy the value in the MDR into the CIR so that gets copied across there and the final part of the fetch increment the program counter by one okay so that's the end of our second fetch we now need to decode this command well the opcode is LDA there we go, I got it right. Uh, and the operand is, I'm just going to space that out, uh, the operand is 011. Okay, so we've now decoded it, we split it up into opcode and operand. Now that opcode, LDA, means load data into the accumulator. The operand, now you'll notice there is no hash this time. Okay, there's no hash because instead of storing that value directly, we are going to uh, access this memory address and we are going to store whatever data is stored at that memory address in the accumulator. Okay, so when we execute this, we cannot pull the stuff directly out of the memory store. We are reliant on the memory address register and the memory data register to fetch this information. Okay, so the address that we're looking for gets copied into the MAR. Okay, we are going to look at address 011. So across the uh, across the address bus we go, and we are going to scan down. Here is address 011. Well, the data stored at 011 is 10. So that gets copied across the address bus. Uh, sorry, across the data bus, and it gets stored in the MDR. Okay, there we go. It is now stored in the MDR. And that, hopefully, should give you an idea as to why we need uh, a separate register to hold the currently executing instruction. Because if we just kept the, uh, the instruction in the MDR, that would have then been obliterated by this data, and the CPU would have thought, well, I don't know what I'm doing now. Okay, so now that we have moved that data across into the data register we are finally ready to store it in the accumulator so it goes into there and boom we have just completed our second execution okay let's go through it again now you might want to maybe just pause the video uh, make a sketch of this and go through it on your own and then watch the video and and uh, and, and check your answers I would recommend trying that um, if you if you're not confident enough to try it on this pass don't worry because we've still got a few more um, cycles to go through okay so what's the first thing that happens the value gets copied from the PC into the MAR Okay, we are now going to go across the address bus. We are going to look at memory address 2. Here it is. The commands, uh, sorry, the data stored at memory address 2 is add 012. So that gets uh, moved across the data bus into the MDR. Okay, once it's in the MDR, the next thing that happens is it gets copied into the CIR. Okay, now we're not quite finished on the fetch because there's one more thing. What's the last thing that we have to do? All together, one, two, three, increment the PC. Boom, that's the end of our fetch. Okay, so now we can decode this word. The opcode in this instance is uh, ADD and the operand is 012. Okay, now no prizes for guessing what command add means it means add a value onto the accumulator in this case it means add the value which is stored at memory location 12 onto the value which is currently stored in the accumulator okay so when we execute this as always if we're accessing memory that address needs to be copied into the MAR 
Okay, once that address is in the MAR, we know where we're looking. So we go across the address bus. We go down to memory location 12, and we can see the data is 5. So that gets pulled out over the data bus, and that gets stored in the MDR. So now that we fetch that data from memory, we're ready to execute the command. So add 5 onto the value currently stored in the accumulator. 10 plus 5 is 15. Okay, and we have completed that execution. Okay, now we're not done yet. We keep on going until the system tells us to stop. So again, hopefully you're feeling a little bit more confident about what goes on here. Uh, pause the video, maybe see if you can uh, uh, go through the steps yourself. We copy the value from the PC into the MAR. Boom, there it is. We are now looking at this uh, memory address uh, in memory, so we go across the address bus, look at location 3, STO013. That moves across the data bus and it gets stored in here, uh, STO013. Uh, there we go. Once it's been moved into the uh, uh, data register, we copy it across, we store it in the current instruction register, and the final part of the fetch, as always, is to increase the PC by one. Okay, that's the end of our fetch. We are now going to decode the instruction. So maybe have a guess at what you think the opcode and operand are. And I will just add them in here. So the opcode is going to be STO and the operand is uh, 013. Okay, there we go. Now, STO means store the value in uh, from the accumulator. Okay, so we are going to take the value which is currently in the accumulator and we are going to store it in memory. Now, we are going to have to access memory, but it's going the other way this time. Okay, in every other instance, we have pulled data out of memory into the data register. This time, we are pushing data from the data register into memory. Okay, so we are still going to need an address. So that address is 013. Okay, that gets copied into the memory address register. Now we're not ready to go across the address uh, bus yet because we need to actually have the data in place in the MDR ready to move across. So that data from the accumulator gets copied into the MDR. Okay, now we've got everything in place, we are ready to look up that um, address in memory and then store the value which is currently in the MDR. So across the address bus we go, we look up address 013, here it is, and then we pull this data from the MDR and we store it here in the um, memory store. Okay, now we're still not finished. Okay, because we don't stop until the computer tells us to stop. So, one more time, once more into the breach, we move the value from the PC into the memory address register. We go across the address bus and we look up this memory address. At memory address 4, we can see that the command is HALT. So, we are going to store that in the... Uh, memory data register across the data bus it goes it gets stored there we are going to copy that into our current instruction register there it is and even though we can see the command is halt and in theory we are going to stop our program okay the fetch still has to happen we don't know what that command is until we've decoded and executed it so we still have to increment that PC okay so now we can decode the instruction. The opcode is halt and the operand is nothing. There is no operand for a halt command. Okay. Now that we have decoded it, we are going to execute the command and what halt does is just stop the program. Okay. Doesn't clear any of the registers, it just stops the program. Okay. So our little program here adds 5 and 10. 
that's all it does okay uh, and it only takes uh, a few clock cycles um, to do uh, it took us quite a while because we are human and humans are rubbish um, but uh, it would take a computer uh, a billionth of a second because computers are wonderful okay um, now it's my hope that understanding what happens during the fetch decode execute cycle will give you a better understanding of why having a higher clock speed improves computer performance. Remember, the higher your clock speed, the better your computer performance in theory, because more of these instructions can be carried out per second. Okay, we are going to have another video which looks at computer performance. So we'll be looking at the number of cores, we'll be looking at um, clock speed and how that affects a CPU, and we will be looking at what cache is and how cache aids uh, computer performance. But understanding what happens during the fetch decode execute cycle allows you to properly comprehend why clock speed is an important factor in CPU architecture. That's it. Uh, I hope you have found this video useful. If you have, um, then maybe uh, let me know. If there's anything that you think could be improved, then obviously let me know. Uh, these videos are designed to help you out so that you can get the best grade that you possibly can in your GCSE computer science. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Feel free to ask me any questions uh, about anything that you do not understand. And let's just finish up with this wonderful background which took me all of um, 10 seconds uh, to make. Um, I'm very, very pleased with, with my work there. So, yes, uh, subscribe to my channel smash that like button etc etc um thank you that's the end <laughs>